Welcome to the Kimball Hooker Show. I'm Kimball Hooker, and we're here in Los Gatos, Montessorino. I really just want to start my show off today and say, you know, sometimes we all get like uh, in, a, in a struggle or a slump. And I want to make sure that everyone knows it happens to everyone. You're not singled out. Indeed. And it's always a good thing to identify those that are for you on your team, on your side, that rock with you. Okay? And what I mean by that is support you. Everyone has a fan base. I don't care if it's one or two. It could be family. could be others. But, mm -hmm. you know, don't ever think you're alone. Okay, so when when things get going tough, you just have to identify those that rock with you and be able to say, you know what, this person is a supporter. I'm going to have them on my team. It doesn't matter what your line of work is or what it is you're trying to accomplish. Just make sure you know who is on your team. And so mm -hmm. for me, I surround myself around people who light up when they see me. Mm -hmm. And it's in, in my life is easier that way. Um, with that, I just want to say I have a special guest in the house today, Mr. George G. Rock Williams. He's not just a world-renowned superstar, but I'm happy to say he's my friend. Hey, yeah, man, we are friends. We go way back, man. 20 plus, at minimum, at least 20 plus. Yes, indeed. You know, the thing I like about you the most is you, you're humble with what you've accomplished. You know, where the, I know some of the roads you travel, and I know you travel beyond what I know. So mm -hmm. you're a man of you know many talents. You play multiple instruments. You've written many songs. You've been a part of one of the biggest artists, I would say, in the world, which we're going to get into that. Right, right. Um, but I do want to start off uh, from the beginning. You know, like, what's your musical background? Where are you from? Well, you know, I was born in Louisiana. Okay. But I was three years old when we came to California. So from there, you know, being a kid, writing poetry at the age of six and seven and eight. Wow. I wanted to get into something more than just the words. And so when I got about, let's just say 11, 12 years old, started toying with drums, congas and stuff like that. But it wasn't enough, you right, know what I'm saying? Right, you know, you right. can hear the beats and stuff, yeah. but hey man, I want to hear some melody. Right. So in high school is where I took beginning piano Where was last high year high school Woodrow Wilson Woodrow okay. in, in San Francisco okay and that's what I'm speaking of San Francisco okay. you know the Bayview district all right yeah okay. and uh yeah so I finally got on an instrument that I could actually make some melodies on and you know me okay. trying to be a singer and my brothers being singers and stuff I was like, okay, if I learn this, you know, I could be somebody. Right, <laughs> you know right, might turn to something. Okay. Right, so that's that's what got me into playing instruments is I started on uh, uh, piano. Oh, piano, okay, mm -hmm. gotcha. Where I started you, piano. Was there any like formal training or were you kind of self-taught? You know, that last year of high school, they gave you what they call beginning piano. And then, so I, you know, me and a friend of mine said, man, you gonna go to college? Yeah, let's go to City College, San Francisco. What are you gonna take? Uh, he didn't know, but I said, I'm taking music, dude. Right. So I took a theory class, and that brought it all together for me. You mm. know what I'm saying? Of course, at the time, I wasn't thinking that's the route I'm going to take. I didn't want to be academic with music. I wanted to be creative with music. Right. Because that's what I fancy myself as, creative musician. Creative musician. And that's, that was my, always my best suit, and it is till this day. Oh, got it, got it. But I did learn, you know, the basic fundamentals of what it is, what the chord structure is, the melodies and all that. It was important. Right. So, you know, when I'm writing uh, songs and, you know, helping other people, I know what I'm doing. Right. You know, I know why I'm in this key, and I know why you shouldn't be in it. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, you know? exactly, right. So, you know, that's, that's how I got started in ac actually playing instruments. Right, okay. Now, mm -hmm. as far as you uh, being able to like, uh, like was it like, was your family involved with it? I mean, I know a little oh, bit man. about your mom. I know that she had that up there in the city. Right. That was huge. Right, right. Talk to us a little bit about that. Well, I'll tell you just like this to make, it's a long story, but I'm gonna try to make it short. <laughs> right. Mom, Ruth Williams. Okay. There's a, there's a theater in San Francisco, the Bayview Hunters Point area where moms uh, had her theater company. Um, she was a community activist. Um, she did a lot of things. She was a creative person too, you right. know. And she did a lot of things in the theater and included the community. And what happened with the theater back then, I, I believe it was in 67, I believe, there was an incident that happened with a kid that got shot in the neighborhood. And the shooting, the, the community felt was in unjust. 
And so as we hear about things today, it erupted into a, a riot. Wow. Well, when that happened, that building called the Bayview Opera House at the time was shot up by the uh, police and the, um, who, who, who is that that comes to stop riots? I, I forget the name of the. No, I got you. But you know, all those different police forces came and they started shooting things up to, to quiet things down, of course. Wow. Okay. But then after the building got shot up like that, the city decided, well, you know, we're going to just, you know, destroy the building, take it out. We're going to, you know, we're not going to repair it. Wow. Well, mom and a bunch of other community people decided, no, we need this for the community. Right. And so my mother, uh, when she passed, though, you know, when she passed, they named the building after her. She saved the building from being destroyed. And so to, to honor her, they ended up naming the building after her. So now it's called Ruth Williams Memorial Theater. That's huge. Yeah. Right. And she and gives so, back. Right. Yeah. But I'll tell you one <laughs> quick story. I remember when I had gotten into music, you know, I, you know how we are, you know, I, I want to play the music that I like to play. Right. Mom had me playing and writing songs for, for, for all different kinds of plays and stuff, you know, and at the time you were a kid, you don't know this is what you need. You right. know, this is good. Exactly. But to me, I came home one day, I said, Mom, you know, I, I didn't mind writing the songs for your plays and stuff like that, but I want to do my music. I right. want to write my own music. And she says, that's fine. Go ahead, son. Right. Beautiful. Right. Write, right. Your, write your own music. Do it exactly how you want no problem I got one question for you though she says what I, I said what she says where are you gonna live at because <laughs> <laughs> if you're not gonna do music for me too <laughs> right. you got to find a place to stay Wow. And she says after that, mom cracked me up. She says, you wrote the most beautiful songs after that. So. Right. <laughs> she said some light on the situation. In other words, she was enforcing the fact that okay we are in the theater mm -hmm. You know, she writes plays, she does musicals, and you're gonna be a part of this, son. And it's gonna help you. And God knows, in the long run, it really helped me. Right. It really helped me. I'm so glad that she enforced that. Yeah. That no, you're gonna continue in this theater thing because in the long run you'll find that you will hone your skills mm -hmm. in writing and producing music. And then it wasn't no studio. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a studio, before, drum be, machines and all that. This was before that. Yeah, this was all analog. You know, we had to have music musicians in the pit, and I learned how to direct those musicians. Wow. I write, I write the music, and I would direct these musicians, and we would play music for the plays, underscore stuff. Mm -hmm. So mom enforced that, and it was good for me. So wow, there. kudos to moms. Mm -hmm. That's 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 huge. That um, you know, you 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 let her mentor you like that. You mm -hmm. wasn't resistant. You know what I mean? Right. And right. you took her word and guidance and all that Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. And now look what look what you turned into. There it is. You know, and I know she's looking down, smiling, saying, mm -hmm. "Wow, Absolutely. you know, he good, he got it, he understood." Absolutely. And and your teachings has touched so many other people. Right. You know, right. and I'll be honest with you, mm -hmm. I'm one of them. No, no. I used to work with, work with <laughs> you years ago, that. but my help me build my studio, <laughs> right, record, right. and things mm -hmm. of that nature, and we wrote songs. Right. I, you know, together and play, you Definitely play guitar did. on my stuff. Mm -hmm. So. Like I said, you know, you're not just a superstar, Mize, but you're a mm -hmm. mentor, you're a friend, and you're a blessing to the community. Oh, well, thank you, you bro. Know? Yeah, and I we appreciate and that. we look for people like that, mm -hmm. you know, and then to find someone at your talent level and be so humble mm -hmm. is another thing, too, because right. a lot of people have they've made major accomplishments, can't get through to them. You know, I'm glad that you bring that point up because that's one thing that I noticed being out on tour and stuff. I've met some of the most famous people. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the Bobby Browns, you know, all those different types of people. Whitney Houston, who was his wife, of course. Right. Janet Jackson, you know, um, um, LL Cool J, a, a whole lot of people back in the day. And that was some 20 something, 30 years ago. Right. But you know, the thing that I did notice about a lot of those very famous people, mm -hmm. very successful, they were humble people, humble man. People. You'd be surprised. Right. You'd be surprised. And a lot of guys, some of the guys that I knew coming up or who were trying to make it, who got a little local name here and there, can't talk you to can't them. find that, that, that humbleness in yeah. some people, Humility. man. Humility, yeah, that's right. You know? But some of the most famous people, you know, or just want to be common with you. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, exactly. Speaking of that, so let's let's transition into. I, now, this is for me right here. I'm, I'm. I have to ask this a lot of this is for my personal, but I want our, our audience to know. Talk to us a little bit about Hammer, man. Come on. 
Oh man, it's a little bit. It's hard to talk a little. <laughs> <laughs> That's a huge part of your, you know, where right. you've been, your your right. your worldwide success and stuff right. and so forth. But I want to like to, as, as basic as you can break it down mm -hmm. because there's a lot of people listening all over the world, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I want them to really get a grasp on like from the beginning to the middle and mm -hmm. how it transitioned into something else. Talk to us. Well, I can tell you this. Um, I'll never forget getting the call to go and audition for this guy named MC Hammer. See, at the time, he wasn't somebody super big. Mm. He was getting big in the Bay Area, but we, you know, I was I was in R and B and funk music. What years are we talking? Just kind of we're talking back. we're talking eighty eight and eighty nine. All right, okay. And mm -hmm. so you know, during that time, you know, I'm I had just got my little studio equipment. And, you know, I'm trying to be somebody in the music thing, and I get a call from my friend B N G B. She says, G, you got to come out to Fremont. You, you know, you, I told you I was with this guy named Hammer, and they're holding auditions. And I'm like, okay, well, okay, I'll check it out. I'm playing for a rapper. I mean, that wasn't my idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it was something different. But when I got there, as you know, you, cause you came by I too. sure did, yeah. When I got there, I saw all this big stuff going on. I'm like, my goodness, this is not just some little rapper. Right. This is somebody finna be somebody. So I'm thinking, I better really make this gig, right? Right. So I'll never forget going in and there were several guys from Oakland, San Francisco, around the Bay, auditioning to play synthesizer bass. Mm -hmm. They already had their bass player. I thought I was going, you know, I was ready to right. slap, but it, no, we need you on synthesizer bass. And Felton Pilot, uh -huh. who was the director of the band from Confunction, Confunction. the lead That's singer right. of Confunction, he gave me a, a cassette tape. He says there's four songs on here. A, co a what? What did you say? A cassette tape. Okay, all right. <laughs> I just had to reiterate that. And this is how you put it down to me. Go in that room, you'll have five minutes to learn the songs. And you come out here. A song you've never heard before. No, no, I didn't hear the Go songs ahead. before. And uh huh. I said, oh man, this is cold. Why he doing me like this? Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> you think it's punishment. But look at how you was prepped. Right, when you look right. at your mom. Your mom is working right, right now. There it is. That's what helped me. So when I went in there, I just calmed down, played the music. I started learning the little bass lines and stuff. I'm like, okay, this is going to be cool. Right. Okay, G, we need you in here now. Right. I come in and they start jamming. I'm right with it. I'm all with it. I'm no having, problem. And I'm having fun because I'm seeing what the, you know, the atmosphere, the, the vibe is uh -huh. good, you know? So, um, did the audition. A few other guys got up and auditioned. There was a, a friend of mine who became, we became good friends on the tour. He was a keyboard player. His name is Michael Buckholtz. And Michael went, was in the service with Hammer. Mm. So they were buddies already. Okay. And so, you know, uh, Mike, I asked Mike, I said, Mike, so, you know, what do you think my chances are, man? I mean, who am I going up against? He says, you're going against that guy, that guy, and that guy. And I tell, I tell him, I said, so when are we going on tour? Wow. <laughs> and I just said know. it to be confident, you yes. know what I'm saying? He cracked up. He, right. just, he thought it was funny that I felt so confident. Okay, so the great thing was I did get the gig. You know, and I remember the first rehearsal and Hammer came in and he was checking us out. And I'm like, oh man, this is the dude right here. <laughs> you wow. know what I'm saying? He was just sit sitting there bobbing his head as we were rehearsing, learning songs. I'm like, okay, look like I'm in something good here. You know, he, and you know, back then Hammer right. was clean. He was clean. But this is what really let me know who MC Hammer really was. We did a video maybe four days after that called Dancing Machine from the Jackson 5, mm -hmm. the song Dancing Machine. He redid that song. And this was the first time I ever had actually seen him perform. So we're all setting up this big old set in this school, in this auditorium. They're setting everything up and all this great catered food, all these beautiful dancing girls. And it was just so big. Right. And the set was so huge. I'm like, I'm in on this. This is great. Right? Right. So we, we knew the song and, and the director came out and he was telling us now, everybody needs to be hyped. This is the MC Hammer. Musicians, I know you've never played with a rap uh, thing before, but this is all about hype. You have to show some life. I'm like, this is, this is good. Right. I'm down with this. Right. Man, let me tell you something. When the music started and the lights start flashing and Hammer came out dancing, I couldn't even move at first. <laughs> Was you frozen? I was like, oh my God, this dude is bad. It was like seeing James Brown for the first time. He had a lot of energy. He was so bad. 
his dance moves and his I mean he was electrifying and after that few seconds I just got pumped I mean I was just a bit <laughs> <going. laughs> I mean I was wow. gone so you got caught up into it oh my goodness it was such an experience I'll never forget the excitement of that moment and we all, all the musicians, I mean, I've seen, I got a friend that played bass, I ain't never seen him move like that before. Wow. <laughs> you know, Kenny. Of course. I was like, boy, we pumped up in here. Kenny Franklin, shout yeah. out to Kenny yeah, Franklin. shout out to Kenny, you know. But yeah, uh, we, we really got into that whole hammer band thing because it was like the first rapper to ever have a full-fledged uh, band. That's amazing, yeah. and, and to be from the Bay, you know what I mean, right. and, and to be local, and mm -hmm. you know, to you take part in that, like from mm -hmm. the from ground floor, right? You know what I'm saying? It had right. never been done before. Oh my goodness! And so the great. whole thing was new to you mm -hmm. and everybody else around. Oh yeah, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. It was all new, man. You, you, and so to, to me, to to have something like that happen to you and to accept that, like, wow, I'm a part of this great mm -hmm. groundbreaking experience. You have to be humble. Oh my goodness. You have you, to be you humble. You have to be, man, because you know, there's a lot out there. When you're touring for two and a half years, wow. it's like a party. Wow. It's a paid party, man. Wow. Okay, especially when you're with the number one artist in the world. At the, right. That's who he was at the time. At the time. The number one artist in the world. He started out being very popular, and by the time we got through that PhD tour, which was Please Hammer Don't Hurt Him, mm -hmm. he became the number one artist in the world, pop and R&B. And I'm Crossover, telling you, yeah. yes, black music, he was number one on the charts. Uh, pop music, he was number one on the charts. He sold 10 million records. Uh, you know, uh, this dude. Pre-social media, pre-social media. Oh, pre-social media. So these, these are actual 12 inches, these, these are, are actual hard records. Copies. Hard copies. <laughs> That's a whole CDs, different thing. CDs, cassettes, and records. Right, okay. and there's a difference between streams and downloads. Oh, and man. No, this is brick and mortar. Hits then were hits. Real hits, right. <laughs> Not hits on the internet, right. real hit records. Wow. And uh, of course, you know, Hammer was a smash hit, and we went on that long tour. After about a year and a half, I never forget talking to my buddy Tyrone, who was the my roomie, the drummer. And uh, we were on the bus one time coming from the, the airplane, because you know we had a chartered airplane. The airplane said MC Hammer on it. Wow. It was our private plane. Private plane. And uh, we would we would see airports, every airport looked the same dang near after so many right. flights. But we were, we were coming home, uh, we were coming uh, from a gig, and we were just getting off the plane. We got on the bus to take us to the hotel, and we were just saying, man, are you tired yet, man? And, and, and Tyrone says, Tyrone says, yeah, man, you know, but you know what? We better keep going, because this gonna be just a memory one day. <laughs> <laughs> he was right, he was right. But what a memory. What a great memory. What a great memory. There's so many stories. So many stories, so countless, many stories, countless man. stories. Jeez, are there stories in this thing, man. G-Rock, <clears throat> listen, we gotta take a short break. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back in about uh, two or three minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and listen, everyone subscribe, go to G Rock the Great on YouTube. That's what I want you guys to do and subscribe to his channel. He's got mm -hmm. great music, his own original music. We're going to dip into that when we return here on Kimball Hooker Show. Thank you to the city of Montessorino for their continued support of KCAT Public Media. The city of Montessorino has enabled KCAT to inspire, educate, entertain, and inform our community through the magic of television and digital media for over 38 years. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Kimball Hooker Show here in uh, Montessorino in Los Gatos. I'm here with my special guest, Mr. George G. Rock Williams. We're going to continue our interview right now, and we had to take a small break, but I want to go right back in where we dropped off okay. and tell us a little bit about like the tour. I mean, mm -hmm. where did the tour consist? Where, I mean, were, were you in different states, countries, U.S., oh abroad? God. You know, um, we went to every city in every state and every state in the country <laughs> where didn't you Twice. go right <laughs> wow <laughs> okay but um it was it was such a great experience you didn't really get to know much about the places that you went because it was a gig you know what i'm saying you go to new york you do a couple of gigs in new york and the next two days later you're going back to california then you're bouncing to the south it was just a continuous you know thing 
and uh, Hammer had shows, I guess concerts all around the world, just continuous. And he was like what I said earlier, this going to be a memory one day. So he's like, I'm getting all I can get. <laughs> right. So he stayed on tour. <laughs> right, right. So right. the first tour, you were on the first tour. First yeah, I was on the, the first the first leg of the tour, the one where the 10 million copies were sold. Please Hammer Don't Hurt Him. Yeah, Please okay. Hammer Don't Hurt Him. And what was the release from that? Uh, was that the, that's not the, the Headhunter, the Funky Headhunter? No, that no, the, that was uh, Can't Touch This. Can't Touch This, okay. Can't Touch This and, you know, all the other songs that went along with that album. Uh, Can't Touch This was the biggest song. That was the biggest song. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. got it. Okay. Help and, the Children. He had a lot of a lot of hits off of that. Right. Because I know he also did a Prince remake too, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. He did. Man, Hammer did so many different remakes, and that was his thing. He would take the old school music and he would rap to it and put the choruses in it, and that's the way a lot of rappers did then. Right. You know, they took the choruses from the old school music, put a hip hop beat to it, and rap to it right and, you know since it was already a hit it was recycled <laughs> a recycled hit exactly you know how, how was it in terms of like i mean there's so much to talk about but like the wardrobe and you know wearing the clothes that was you know giving to you know <laughs> <laughs> that was the first time i put on those baggy pants and they made that uniform for us i believe it was either la or san diego i forget which gig it was but it was the first time we did it and everybody was in the dressing room going, man, this is crazy. This is crazy. Do we have to wear this stuff? <laughs> it was like, you better wear it or you're going home. <laughs> right, right. That was part of the gig. And yes, it was the strangest kind of costumes I've ever put on. But you get used to it after a while. Right. And, you know, in every gig was a different uniform. Oh, really? Because they had seamstress uh, designers, uh, James Head and Duval. The two designers, right. uh, clothes designers, were on tour with us. Friends of Hammer from, from uh, Oakland, and they designed those clothes every day. Oh, wow. Ahead of time and for every gig. Every week, if we did three gigs that week, we had three different outfits. Wow, that's amazing. I mm -hmm. didn't know that. I, yeah. I thought there was maybe a costume that you kept and you just kind of wore that. Mm -hmm. No, no it's always different. Disposable. <laughs> wow, disposable. <laughs> Throw it away, you got a new one coming. Got a new one coming. Wow. And there were special ones made for like shows like American Music Awards, the Grammys. You did all those shows? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Arsenio Hall, Oprah Winfrey. I'll give you a little story about the Oprah Winfrey show. You know, um, I'll never forget how when we were setting up to do the show, um, I was put in a certain position on the stage. And I was like, great, I'm gonna be seen. My, my family gonna see me. Somebody came up and moved my keyboard. I was really pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> Unbeknownst to you. But I said, okay, they might fire me today, but mom gonna see me today. <laughs> right, wow. So at the end okay. of the show, I don't know if you'll ever be able to uh, bring it up on YouTube or anything, but at the end of the show, Oprah Winfrey and Hammer and the dancers were doing the please, hammer, don't hurt them, march around the stage while the beat was playing. Right. And I wasn't supposed to do it, but I got in line too. You got in line <laughs> please, too. Please, hammer, don't hurt them. Hey, mom. <laughs> <laughs> and you left your workstation? Your key, your, 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 really? And I was doing it. I was right behind hammer and open. <laughs> I said, they might fire me today, but boy, mama and them going to see me They're today. They're going to see me today. And sure enough, mom saw me. And from what I heard, everybody was saying, my brothers and them, Boy, she was so proud. Wow. She was just screaming, oh, that's George, that's George right there. That's right. my baby. That's <laughs> so that was a family And that moment. meant everything to me. Right. You know, the, the, the whole music thing and, you know, getting the pride of my mom. Yeah. Meant yeah. everything. Meant everything to me. Meant you. everything. So when the tour was over and I got home and, and all the stories were being, you know, told about what they experienced about me being out there. That was the one thing that really stuck to me is that how proud mom was. I right. took her to the grocery store one day uh -huh. and she's, this the one I told you about, right. he's my son. She was proud. Yeah, she was so proud. Proud, right, and that's that what it's all about. Meant, I can I totally to identify with that. Yeah, I know you can. Yeah, man. yeah, I know you yeah. can. Absolutely, man, I remember my dad, I would tell mm -hmm. stories and he mm -hmm. would see me on stage mm -hmm. and that's my boy. Right, right, you know how it is. Yeah, yeah, you know how yeah. It is. It that's means, what it's all it about. It means everything. You carry that with you, that's a lifetime thing right that's there. That's a lifetime thing, that's what matters the most. G Rock the Great on you. YouTube subscribe yes, indeed. that's right check out it tell me a little bit about like um when you guys were on tour and I'm we're gonna make some other transitions here too. right right that's fine um but when you were on tour I have to know this 
What was it like when the crowd erupted? Oh my goodness, man! That was the electric. I'm living through moments. you right now, just to let you know, because I haven't those, experienced that. Oh man, I tell you, you know, I remember being a kid and going to a Jackson Five concert in San Francisco at the uh, Cow Palace, and I never forget. All my friends would say, you know. Uh, Yo, that Jackson Five man, them chumps, man, you know, and they were out there screaming too, like the girls, because <laughs> <laughs> right. it was so electrifying. Right. And the same thing happened with Hammer. When you get up on that stage at any concert during that time, Hammer isn't even on stage yet. We're coming on stage, getting on our instruments, and everybody's screaming, ah, they're just going nuts. And boy, when we kick into that, please, Hammer, don't hurt me, he's coming on stage, oh man, it just erupts. Can and you it, hear? It's, you barely can. You barely can, you barely can, man. I mean, and Hammer knew how to work a crowd, of course. Of course. Because he's a showman from way back. Right. He, he's a true showman, and he knew how to work a crowd. He wouldn't let them rest. He wouldn't let it go die down. Right. It was he always a, in you know, It was all about the hype, you, right. know? Right. you know. It was right. all about the hype. Of course. Remember kidding, playing oh, all of them? All of that, yeah, of That's, course. He was an offshoot of that type of rap. Oh, my goodness. And so it was all about the hype. So how did hype. you stay focused to play your part, like your musicianship, you know, to... The timing of it, the, the everybody staying cohesive. Because how many people? How many, okay, let me back up. How many band members were on that stage at one time playing? I tell you what, good question. It started out being a eight piece or nine piece band, uh, four girl singers, four guy singers, and a host of dancers and a couple of hype men. By the time we got through the first leg of the tour, it was the first year. I think we might have 50 people. <laughs> oh my God. It became a circus. Okay. And I'll wow. tell you how that would happen. Hammer was such a, I guess, kind hearted dude. He wanted to give people opportunities. And I'll never forget, we go into a town. If we pull up on the bus to the hotel, there's guys out there, people knowing the hammer's coming. Some kind of way they got the word. And, you see some dancers out there dancing they butt off on the concrete, flipping and about to break their neck. Wow. And Hammer would say, what y'all think about them? Oh, they, them two is bad. Shoot, by the time you go to the next city, they on the bus with us. They on the plane. <laughs> so he was grabbing people along <laughs> this He was picking up people along wow. the way. But that's opportunity too, mm -hmm. you know, just to be seen and right. yeah, you know, somebody could, uh, another career could spin off for somebody else because of that. Who there knows? There it is. There it is. So wow. it was beautiful like that. Yeah, man. that's, that's great. You, you know, that's not something you'll ever forget. No. It's just yeah. like I said, so many memories. We could talk. You could just do one called uh, "About Hammer," <laughs> right? Just that alone. <laughs> All about Hammer, and that'd take five hours for us wow. to discuss it. And then there were so many spinoffs that it went into as well. Like I mean, he did the cartoons, the Cartoon Network. Oh, I mean, it goodness. went into so many different things like that. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Wow. You know, he was he was a big big star, and and still is in his own right. right. I mean, he made history, and people still talk about Hammer to this day. Even to this day. And before the COVID. Uh, struck Hammer was actually touring again he was actually touring again he was doing something called old school party or something mm, like uh -huh. that and he brought on a couple of the uh, old school rappers uh, with him and they were really successful with that Wow. Okay. and one thing I did yeah. notice though because I did see him perform in Las Vegas all those years later and I sat back as just a guy in the audience and I'm watching mm -hmm. and I'm like wow let's see what this is like you know mm -hmm. and he come out and he got man he got down I mean he did his thing but one thing I noticed I says Hammer is pacing himself now all these uh, years later age you know he yeah. yeah but he still get down when he dance he gonna dance with full energy yeah but he not gonna dance throughout the whole show like he used to. Right. And I understand it, you know. Right, right, yeah, smart, you know. yeah, too. Yeah. It's conserving that energy. Right, conserving the energy, but still a showman, still very entertaining, and still gonna put on the, the best show, any rapper, whatever, no rapper could ever. Right. Not, and I haven't seen it. Right. Ever could match Hammer on stage. Not possible. It, not many even singers in terms True. of uh, energy. performance yeah. and energy. Right. You know, Hammer, I can see that. Hammer was just numero uno when it came to showtime. Right. Wow, that's crazy. So all, so look, all this has prepared you for mm -hmm. G-Rock. Yes. The great. Yes. Today. There it is. Where are you now with your own music? Well, I'm glad you brought up that night. And I, I brought up the brand G-Rock the Great, not out of ego, but out of confidence and out of, I guess you could say, uh, a way to challenge myself to be great. Right. You know, some people say, you know, you call yourself great. Well, you, who you think you are? <laughs> no, it has nothing to do with the ego. It's all about, you know, challenging myself 
you know, to be as great as I can be. Right. And so what I'm doing right now is, you know, as as you know, I've always created music. I've helped over two, three hundred uh, artists, uh, local artists throughout the Bay Area make music over right. the years. Right. And then so, you know, but all the time, I'm, you know, I've been all the time making my own uh, music, uh, even though I was overburdened by that for a while. Right. Uh, you know, you remember right. back in the exactly. days, I would have three or four clients a day. Right. And so me making my own music, I'd be burnt out just making all of these rap songs and stuff. But right. Now things have quieted down over the last five, six years, and I've been getting more into my own creativity. And so right now, yeah, I came up with the brand G-Rock the Great. And I'm making music accordingly to that and, you know, trying to build up my content on my YouTube page and the whole nine. Right. I have to tell you, I've always been a fan since oh, day one. Always Kimble. been a fan. I mean, you, you play well. Mm -hmm. You're a humble guy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You're out there doing it. You're like, like they say, pounding the pavement. Right. You know what right. I mean? And you're not Absolutely. just saying, hey, you remember me? I used to play with Hammer. And that's mm -hmm. like living off of that. It's right. like, you, right. to me, you've always had your own. There it is. There it is. Always. You there know what I mean? Is. And mm -hmm. respectfully, I have to say like, just to just to be able to be you know self taught you you know, you, you you took mm -hmm. your you you were under your mother's wing mm -hmm. you took that mm -hmm. um you didn't take it for granted right you know um mm -hmm. and then so many experiences came yes indeed from the creator thank god you know mm -hmm. your way mm -hmm. and you ran with it and Absolutely. you were able to not just take advantage of it but mm -hmm. you were able to like in my opinion give back there it is there's so there many people that you've taught you don't even know right i really don't you don't even know you know i mm -hmm. can ask you you and you'll be wrong because, <laughs> right. because there's so many people you schooled me right, right you know i remember you you actually came to my house absolutely you know when it helped me build my studio one of my first mm -hmm. studios pro tool sessions sure did. And, i remember that very yeah. vividly and yes, i was like did. thinking like he ain't coming but I, <laughs> <laughs> because i'm like he's this hammer guy you know what i mean right, right. like i'll ask him, but all he gonna do is say no right but you know throughout our i would say friendship mm -hmm. like you know because we we don't live too far from each other right and we've generated this kind of like a a, 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 fr a music friendship you right. know what i mean right. and i think one of the biggest things i have to share this story too i have a story okay. too so good um i remember when you gave me a call mm -hmm. and i remember playing for cindy heron right that's Vogue, right that's right you know and that's right this was in the city in the san mm -hmm. francisco you know um at the theater where your mother is mm -hmm. you know res uh, uh, respected there mm -hmm. um they named the building after her mm -hmm. I'll never forget it. And we have to say, for all of you that don't know Cindy Heron, you can Google her. Mm -hmm. She was one of the vocalists of In Vogue. Mm -hmm. And still is. And still is. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it still is, exactly. But yeah, uh, I did call you because I said, when we do this, this was a show called The Celebration. And it was to honor my mom, uh, having been, you know, uh, the building being named after her. And no one had did such an honor. So I says, you know, we're gonna to put together a production and I need to handpick some musicians I can trust right. to come in and help me celebrate for mom's honoring uh, her name being on the building, right. the Ruth Williams Memorial Theater. I called you, I called a few other guys and you got, you guys came through for me. I called Cindy, who was my sister for many, many years. Right. We started out together, you know what I'm saying? All through In Vogue and all that. Matter of fact, In Vogue was on tour with us. And so, you know, we had that experience, being on tour together. Right. And so uh, I called Cindy and she says, when and where? Wow. That's all she said, when and where? See, now that's love right yeah, now. It this is a superstar love. as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. this woman's been all yes, over the world indeed. with Vogue. Yes, indeed. And uh, so she came right on out and did that favor for me, her and her sister, uh, Cammy, they got on the stage right. and we sung some Ed Bogue stuff and we got down. You, you got remember? Down. That's we right. had fun. I remember it's on video right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We Check had a good YouTube. time. Yes, indeed. We had a good time that show. And I appreciate you guys for coming through and you know helping me celebrate mom, man. You know, I have to say that's part of the, your your reward for being humble. Mm -hmm. I just I'm 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 mentioning this throughout our interview right. because I really want people to understand. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of great things, but it's coupled by humility. There it is. You there know, it is. All these Which reoccurrences, yeah, all these mm -hmm. reoccurrence reoccurring things mm -hmm. that happen over and over here mm -hmm. and there. You know, it spirals into bigger and better for you. There it is. Because of your humility. There it is. Because nobody wants to be bothered with somebody who's there. Right. They can sing good, play good, but they're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I can't work with that guy. I'm gonna choke that guy right. the next time I see that guy. You know, no one wants to be and bothered. We know 
you're in the entertainment business, you're gonna run into that. You're gonna run into that, right? So yeah, you don't really, you don't really fit into that category. So no. for all the young people, the, the mm -hmm. kids that's listening, mm -hmm. hone your craft, hone your skill, get good. I get all that. Hey, mm -hmm. if everybody's looking at me, I got likes mm -hmm. on my page. Don't right. forget where you come from. Yeah. Maintain that's, humility. Humility. That's that big. is important. I'm glad you're hammering that home. Yeah, that is very good. I want you to show the world uh, a, a, a memento that you brought. Oh, okay. I just have to touch on that real All quick because right. a lot of so people don't see stuff I like this. I have this album here, this uh, plaque here. Uh, it's the MC Hammer commemorative 10 million copies sold platinum record. Wow, that's huge. And it was awarded to all of us who had went on tour with MC Hammer during the 89, 90, 91 tour. Please Hammer, don't hurt him. And, and boy, we heard them. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the, and those are real numbers. That's real. Those are real numbers. Yeah. Wow. That's These not, are it. not hits on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> wow. These are hits in the world, the right. real world. And for yeah. the world that's that's looking on right now, what was your involvement with this record in terms of not producing the record, but your with the um, uh, with Hammer, just with Hammer, period. Well, we were awarded this platinum record because as participants of the band and the stage act, we helped sell these copies. Wow. Over a period of the tour, his popularity grew and grew and grew, and we were part of that. And so they awarded us platinum records to say, hey, you know. Thank you. You guys were on the team. Right. We got the championship, and you know, you get to hold the trophy too. <laughs> wow, all right. <laughs> I like it. I like it. G Rock the Great on YouTube. Check him out. You can check out his music there. He has a lot of um, a lot of original music as well. Yes, and, indeed. Um, you know he's an experienced musician. So talk to us a little bit about that in terms of mm -hmm. your um, your original music. Yeah, um, I will say this about my music, and I think other people will say it too. I don't strive to be different, but I can't help it. Right. <laughs> you know, you're not going to really hear me sound like too many other people and again that's not an ego thing that's just my own creativity i try to draw from different music that is out there and you know to make my music sound i guess you could say current and you know familiar okay but i am who i am and i had to learn to accept that be creative you know what i'm saying um play good music come up with good lyrics and put together good ideas and people appreciate your music. So yeah, I'm, I'm in that, I'm on that journey right now. I just want to put as much content on my YouTube page so that, you know, listeners can go there and say, oh, okay, this guy's the real deal. You right, know? right. And I consider myself the real deal when it comes to producing, uh, playing an instrument, uh, several instruments. Um, I'm not Luther Vandross, but I sing. <laughs> right, right. No, you, you're definitely the real deal. I right, have to say right. that. For anybody that's listening or watching, mm -hmm. um, check him out, G-Rock the Great. Um, talk to me about some of your influences. I mean, who were some of the people you admired or, you know, you know, coming up and like, like, wow, I like to pattern myself, something like, or you, you, you kind of, what do we say, big definitely. borrow steal from other artists? Yes, and absolutely. Man, I tell you, man, you know, you would have to be an OG to understand this, right? <laughs> but Sly and the Family Stone, yes. Sly Stone is That's definitely one. Oh my goodness. Vallejo. Uh, Prince, of course. Okay. Um, you know, Stevie Wonder is like my favorite all time artist, but I could never sing like him. Right. I, sometimes I try to play like him, but Stevie Wonder, you know, the genius. One of a kind. One of a kind, you know. Then there's Parliament Funkadelic. Okay. There's Rick James. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So there's so many influences out there. And then, you know, you have to parlay that into, okay, how can you make this sound like, you know, you. current music and yourself? Right. So, you know, uh, you have to listen to some of the younger artists out there, the Drakes and all those and say, okay, this is how we do it, but you don't want to imitate them because people say, yeah, that sounds like Drake. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, you're not and original at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Because nobody gonna do Drake better than Drake. So right, right, you right. gotta, do you but you still have to like you said take those influences and try to you know what i'm saying put them in your music right right that comes over time i think finding yourself musically there it is it, it, there it, it is it, it's, it's, that's it, what happens it's a process in the making there i went through is. that you know mm -hmm. and i talked to other people mm -hmm. musicians i can right. relate um you know when you're playing an instrument you're happy you feel good mm -hmm. and you're learning and mm -hmm. you know but then there's a certain part of you that's like 
but what about me? Right. You know, I want right. to have my own sound. There you go. You want your own sound. Yeah. And I think that comes over time. You know, and, and, it, and it might differ for different people. It right. Might, you know, some right. people might start off having their own sound, but some people, it, it comes over time. Well, you know, Kimball, it was a very young guy that told me, he was 19, and he told me this last year. And he says, uh, gee, I listen to all kinds of music. I'm eclectic. And I said, well, what do you mean? I listen to, I got a Pandora account, a Spotify. I listen to all kinds of music. And I can tell you right now, it's not just this kind of music that Drake and all these guys are doing that people are loving. Listen to this. He played, played me a song one day. I was like, that's not like me. Boom, down, boom, boom. Slapping the bass, playing guitars, and rapping and singing. I'm like, you listen to this? You're 19. He says, yeah, we listen to all kinds of music. And play you, do you. People will like it. Right. Whatever you do that you can bring and contribute to the music out right. there. Right. Because as you know, Kimball, we talked about it. Records, hard copies are really not where it's at anymore. Right, right. And so everybody and their mama is playing music now, trying to at least. You got to do you. Got to do you. And just put it out there. Right. It's so worldwide now that you don't know. You might get a patch of an audience here, a patch of an audience there, and that's maybe all you need to get popular with your music. Right. So do what makes you sound good, what people will appreciate from you, and I think that would be the key, and that's where I'm at with it. Gotcha. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. G Rock. Everybody tune in to G Rock on YouTube. You're listening to Kimball Hooker Show here in Los Gatos, Monteserino, and we're gonna take a short break and we'll see you right back. Thank you to the Los Gatos Community Foundation for their continued support of KCAT Public Media. Because of groups like the Los Gatos Community Foundation, KCAT has been able to inspire, educate, entertain, and inform our community through the magic of television and digital media for over 38 years. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Kimball Hooker Show. I'm Kimball Hooker here in Los Gatos, Montesorino with my special guest, Mr. George G. Rock Williams. I want you guys to go to his YouTube channel, his YouTube page, and subscribe at the G. Rock The Great. Mm -hmm. G-Rock is good to have no you. No K. Man. No K. G-Rock the Great. G-R-O-C <laughs> the Great. Right. On there YouTube. Check them out, y'all. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it must be like a blessing just coming from like a musical family, mm -hmm. like like where you're from. And, yes, indeed. You know, with your mom and yourself. Mm -hmm. Your brothers. Talk to me mm -hmm. a little bit about your brothers. Yes, indeed. Uh, my oldest brother, Kevin, he's a solo artist. He sings. He does, you know... Uh, Marvin Gaye, Al Green, anybody from back in the day, he, you know, he can sing like Covers, uh-huh. Yeah, and you know, we all got into the cover music over the years. When you're not doing something original, of course, you to keep your skills up, you do cover music. And right. so, yeah, he does that. And then there's my other brothers. Um, there's Keith, there's uh, uh, Timothy, and my two cousins, uh, Gary and Frank. Okay. And my, he's like my brother, Bruce. He's a Williams. And we formed a group called Kinship. Okay, and I, I of course, uh, uh, managed and um, produced them, and they're like Temptations, Dramatics, you know, Delphonics, all the old school classic singing groups. Style. Right. And so yeah, they did the circuit, you know what I'm saying, over the years. Right. Up until COVID. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then you know I had two other brothers, uh, Jalil and uh, Eric, Eric who has long passed in 2014, but he was one of the few. Uh, black inventors he actually was inventing medical devices oh wow and okay. he earned um 19 patents maybe more and he, he's in some of the educational books and he earned about two plus million dollars through a device that he actually invented wow. and it's called a, uh it's, it's a particular type of a heart catheter being used to this very day oh wow and so yeah he was honored because of that as in fact there are some people in the Bayview community um, in San Francisco that are currently doing a story on my brother, uh, Eric Williams. And so, yeah, you know, we have a good history of being involved in uh, the entertainment industry, but, you know, he was in you know, the invention 
aspect right. of it. And medical too, right? Yeah, medical inven- oh, uh, wow. inventions. And so, yeah, he has a couple of uh, inventions that are being used right now patents. in the medical mm-hmm. and over 18, 19 patents. Wow, that's incredible mm-hmm. just to see how diverse your family is. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, that's, that's just that in alone is something to take pride in. Right, you absolutely. Know? Oh, exactly. Absolutely. So you have to know your family's worth, your value. There it is. There you it know is. what I mean? Confidence mm-hmm. is key. There it to, is, man. You there know what I mean? Is. To know mm-hmm. you can go out and compete with the rest of the world at mm-hmm. a high level. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, you know. What can we look forward to G-Rock in the future? Well, you know, what I am definitely hopeful for is to be able to put out some great music that people will love for years and years. And that's the dream and desire of most creative people is that they would do some works that will be appreciated, loved, and purchased. (laughs) Right? Right? That doesn't hurt. That doesn't hurt. But yeah, you know, to put out music that people will love, like the music we grew up loving. Right, right. You know, and that's where I'm at right now. I have the studio, you know, that, you know, it's still open to public and clients, but I use it more now for my own uh, creativity. More so? Yeah, more so now because I have so many less clients as we spoke about earlier. Right, right. But you like to plug your studio? Oh yeah, yeah, it's called Throwdown Studio in San Jose. And you can uh, contact me on producer grock uh, at gmail.com. Okay. And if you need uh, studio time, uh, you need some music mix, mastered, anything, you know, if you would just want me to play guitar or bass or something. Right. Producer grock at gmail.com. Where are you located? San Jose, California. All right, you guys heard it. Mm-hmm. G Rock the Great on YouTube. I'm Kimball Hooker on the Kimball mm-hmm. Hooker Show. G Rock, thanks for coming on the show, sharing your story with us, your struggles, your, your I mean, mm-hmm. humility, mm-hmm. Uh, your passion, your music, for lo- your love for 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 mm-hmm. music. You I, know, and I certainly appreciate it. We appreciate thanks you for having, having me. Yeah, absolutely, and we'll see if we can't bring you back for a part two. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> we know you got more stories to tell. Oh yeah, there's much much more to go. <laughs> Kimball Hooker Show. We're signing off. You just heard the Kimball Hooker Show here on KCAT Radio. Explore all our KCAT original programming at kcat.org slash radio.